Okay, one of the first things that you always want to do when you be, start using Global Mapper regularly is to get rid of this heinous jaundiced background. The way to do that is to go up to View, Background Color, and pick a more neutral color. I'm going to pick white. If you like yellow jaundice coloring, you can keep it there, but that's how you get rid of that so you don't have to see it every time you log on. All right, with that aside, now we can get to the more serious um, part here. And what I want to show you today is how to reproject raster data in global mappers. So we're going to download some data from a, a map server, and then we're going to um, crop it in global mapper. We're going to download global data, and then we're going to crop it to um, Africa or whatever I decide in a few minutes. And then we are going to reproject it. So, again, the best way to uh, get data immediately into this is to download it for free from the online sources. So you can click here. And MapQuest Worldwide Street Maps is what I'm going to use today. And I guess I could try to figure out the coordinates off the top of my head of where Africa is in the world, but I'm just going to download the whole thing. And it should load pretty quickly because it's just a rasterized base map. It's not, you know, detailed shaded relief information. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the zoom tool and zoom around, oh, let's do the US. I'm not trying to be US centric but I have a better idea of what project, which projections work well there. So we'll zoom in here around the US. And I could spend a lot of time bashing the Web Mercator but suffice to say that you should never use a Web Mercator projection for a small scale map of the world or even a country. Um, now, web mappers love the web mercator because it has a variety of benefits for web programming and for um, zooming in and all this stuff. But generally, it, it's fine if you're if you're zoomed in and it's a large scale map. But for a country map, this is a terrible projection. And if you were in my cartography course, I'd fail you. Okay, I'm off my soapbox now. So there are a couple of toolbars that are really important in Global Mapper. I introduced you to one of them earlier. That was the control center. The control center here is basically um, the tool that allows you to shift layers around. Um, if, you, if you double click on a layer, you get options. And I think you get different options if you right click on a layer. Oh, maybe not. All right. So you get a bunch of options here if you double click on it. One of those options, you can set transparency, etc., is cropping. Now, what we're going to do here is. Um, clip this to um, a latitude and longitude, I guess. Let me look at this really quickly. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Crop to manually specified lat long boundary. And crop a specified number of pixels around the edges of the layer. Crop to currently selected polygons. None of these work. And so what we're going to do is select manually determined um, latitude, longitude. So, uh, northern boundary, I think we're going to stop at, let's say, 50 degrees north. Southern boundary, we can stop at, well, we're, we'll stop at 23, 23 degrees north. And uh, western boundary, well, we don't need Canada, or we don't need Alaska. Sorry, um, sorry, my Alaska compadres, but we'll do uh, minus, I don't know. 150. I guess I do want the whole U.S. I don't really... It shows you how bad my U.S. geography is. And uh, we will do, for our eastern boundary, minus 60. We can always crop more. It's better to... Uh, actually, let's do minus 40. You can always change it later. Alright, so we're going to hit OK. And here we're going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit pause. So you don't have to sit here and wait. It may take a little while. Won't take that long because it's not. It, um, this is this is not elevation data, which is finely detailed. So, all right. Let's see if I can find pause here. Actually, this didn't take long at all. So it just uh, popped back here, and we've got this crop pretty nicely. It's a little oblong because I overshot the east-west extent, but at least the oceans are happy. All right, the next thing we want to do is reproject this. So now that it's cropped, it's going to be a much smaller file size, which will make it reprojecting it go a lot faster. To reproject, we're going to actually get close to the uh, overlay control center, and we're going to use the other most common tool, which is 
the configure toolbar. I'm not sure. I think that might be the configure toolbar there too, that little icon. All right. As we can see, they have a bunch of different layers. You can change how things look, etc. Um, but basically what we have here is the current projection of our data. And we can switch this. We can also load projection files from, you know, that we've stored or found other places into this. And we are going to use a Lambert, what do you think? It's not a thematic map, so we'll go conformal. Thematic maps should generally use equal area projections. And let's hit OK. And I'm going to hit pause again, just so you don't die of boredom here. Oh, dear. This is what I ended up with. Any ideas what I forgot to tweak? Let's take a look. If I go back to the, um, whoops, that's not what I want. If I go back to the, uh, basically the configuration here, I've got Lambert Conformal Conic. I got a little cocky. I forgot to switch. This is for a global projection, which is weird because you'd never use it for a global projection. But if we look, we have a central meridian of zero degrees. That's Greenwich, England. And I probably wanted a central meridian of, let's say, minus 95. Well, let's go 92 just to tweak things a bit. Uh, standard parallels, eh, a little bit off here. Let's make this a second standard parallel, 43 um, north. And um, mm -hmm. all right, so I forgot to do that. I'll be back in a minute. But the point is actually that what I want to show you is that you can tweak these values right in here and I should have done it the first time. So you can change the central meridian, the standard parallels, scale factor, all of this stuff, which is really cool that you can just punch it in like that. All right, see you in a few minutes. Ah, much better. Let's zoom in and see how this looks. And look at that. So it reprojected the raster data. And um, now what we could do is, is, well, actually, I'll do it right now. We can export it and then always bring it into another map with the Lambert conformal projection with the same central meridian, etc. But uh, again, to export, you just go to File, Export PDF File, Export Raster Image Format. And I'll do a GeoTIFF. And I will just do a, well, let's do that. Export bounds. I like to draw boxes. And the TIFF options. Let's go down here, generate TFW file, and yeah, let's hit OK and see what happens. Hmm, that's life, I guess. Let's just file and export the whole thing. All loaded data. All right, United States. Um, again, this will be a very large export, and it will take some time. So this is how you tweak uh, TIFFs, or basically reproject uh, uh, raster images. And it's getting late, so I'm going to go to bed. I'm not even making sense anymore, and I will record more of these soon. I hope you've enjoyed this, or if not enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something. All right, thanks. Talk to you about soon. Bye.